Hello everyone, welcome to Sweet Tomato Vine Homestead. I'm Linda, and today I'm in the kitchen because the kids have started back to school, y'all. I'm really not that parent that be like, yay, school started. No, I'm not that one because they have pulled those graphs out and they already letting us know that it's going to be a whole bunch of graphs. First book we open up, Geometry. And you know, it's got those graphs in it. And y'all, I don't like those graphs. I have never had any use for them. Y'all, where do where you find a chicken at on the graph? I haven't had to deal with any graph. So I don't like them, but I don't want the kids to know that I don't really like them. But because I want them to go ahead, you know, they got to do them. But what I'm doing today, I'm in the kitchen. I'm making this granola for them because I need them to have some good snacks around the house so that they can, you know, be up for whatever is in those books. And so... I'm going to need some, too, because I need some energy to deal with this stuff, y'all. Hopefully, I'll be able to still get a chance to do and enjoy the things that I am enjoying doing in the garden because it's going to take, you know, it takes a lot to get them through the school year. So, whenever they need me, I'm going to be right there to try to help them through those graphs and the geometry and I don't want anything. Y'all, wait a minute. They sent, they sent a book for, I know my son's going to have to read this book, the Hobbit, that's a long book. And the writing in it was so tiny, I was like, I, I ain't made it here because you had to read it to me or we had to go on tape or something and listen to it because I can't see it. But then my, my daughter, they sent her a microscope to, this is some of her lessons because we do homeschool. And so she's going to have to do, uh, she's going to have to use a microscope and, and uh, study uh, some biology, things like that. So, y'all, it's going to be interesting. Oh, and there were some seeds in her packet, in her uh, things that came, her books. There were some seeds in there. I got excited about all those seeds. I'm like, wait a minute, what, what else they got? You know, but um, we're going to go ahead. I'm going to make this granola. And I've already got it. Granola is real simple. I did a video about uh, granola before. It's easy to make. You just get whatever you want to put in it. I got all of my dry ingredients in one bowl, and I have my wet ingredients in another bowl, and my dry ingredients are consisting of, I use the old-fashioned oats, I use any nuts that I have in the house, pecans, uh, almonds, peanuts, walnuts, pumpkin seeds, I use all of those, I mix those in with my dry ingredients, then I get a bowl and I heat up my, uh, what I call my wet ingredients, the oil, which I use coconut oil, I have some um, maple syrup, some uh, honey. I also have some brown uh, strapped molasses. Some peanut butter is in there. And I just mix all those together, heat them in the microwave, and then, or you can heat them on top of the stove if you don't use the microwave. Heat them and then add them to your wet ingredients. Mix them up and pour them on a pan with parchment paper. So I'm using my pizza pans today because I have not, I don't know what we did with my pans. I, uh, so I think I'm going to just go ahead and invest in some more pans and hopefully the fit. I'm going to get a, put a new oven in here. And so the oven's going to be the same size. Y'all, I don't understand about these ovens, these wall ovens. That is the hardest thing to me to figure out. That is what the holdup is. It's me trying to figure out which oven I actually need, what size oven I need. That is the hardest thing to me. It seems like they would make it more simple, but it is hard to me. It's hard because I told y'all already have a problem with measurement. You know, geometry. Yeah, that's measurement. I had a problem with it. For some reason, I can measure it and then I, I either take, once I get the measurement, I'll add something or I take something away. I gotta stop there. I don't know what 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 is that? What is that? But I do that. But I'm going to uh when I figure out what size oven I have, because I did get some pans. These pans I've had for a while, and y'all, these pans will not go into my oven. You think this is a normal size pan, it will not fit into my oven. So that is uh, another story for another day. But I am going to go ahead. I'm going to add some of my homemade uh, vanilla extract. You all haven't made your homemade vanilla extract? This is time to go ahead and get that homemade vanilla extract made. It's too simple. Just get your vodka, get your vanilla bean. You can order those from Amazon, or you can purchase them in the store. But I think I've, the cheapest I found them is on Amazon. And uh, put them in some vodka and let them sit and see it turn brown. I still have some. Uh, I still have some in here. When I go ahead and put them in the bottle that I'm going to have them in, I go ahead and put some of those vanilla beans in there with it. And that just makes it even better. And um, 
I guess since I still have those in there, I'll go ahead and I'm going to give it a shake. And that's just to mix it all up. And y'all, this stuff is delicious. It is, I mean, it's better than any that you will ever purchase in the store. And it's going to be so much less expensive. You'll be able to share it because I just feel this bottle off of the large bottle that I have. So go ahead and make your own uh, vanilla extract. Don't buy that at the store anymore. Uh, that's a, that's a, Put an end to that. Put an end to buying it from the store. Go ahead and say this year you're going to start making your own homemade vanilla. It's an investment because the vanilla beans are not cheap. Vanilla beans might cost you from $25 to $30, but you're going to make a lot of extract with it. The way the extract prices are rising, it's probably going to be, for those little tiny ones, it'll probably be that much pretty soon because they are already up to around 10 So if you make, look how much I have, and then I have plenty left because I made a lot off of those vanilla beans. So go ahead and make your own vanilla uh, extract. I'm just going to add, and you don't have to add as much to your uh, recipes because this is going to be more potent. This is the real stuff. If you find out what they make them, some of those other uh, vanilla, especially the, the, the imitation, imitation vanilla is made with some weird uh, ingredients. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to mix these ingredients up. And y'all, then we're going to get ready. We're going to the garden because it's time to get outside. I have not been outside today. I know the chicken probably wondering where she at, what is going on. And so we're going to go ahead and we'll mix these ingredients together. I'm going to put them in the oven and then we're going outside. So let me get this mixed up. While I have that in the oven, I'm going to go ahead and get started on boiling some tea bags to make my kombucha. Okay, so the first batches are out of the oven, so I'm just going to let them cool while I finish making my kombucha. Okay, I'm finally out here, y'all, and it has taken me a long time to get out here. I did a lot of stuff inside. I even went ahead and, and fixed lunch for the kids and made the kombucha, finished the granola. And so finally I'm out here and I've got, got on some mismatched gloves because this is what I could find. So I'm going to go ahead and let these chickens out for a while because the grass right here in front of the chicken run is getting big again. So y'all want to come outside? Come on and come outside. Come on, y'all. Come on out. There they are. They covered out to enjoy some of this grass. And that's what I want them to do. I want them to clean up some of this grass and they can just stay right around here in this area. I'm going to leave the door open so they can get back into their food and their water. Got some food hanging off the fence. Let me get this and throw it inside of the coop. Don't go off too far now. Y'all, first place y'all wonder. Going over there to the garlic area. Throw that squash in there so that they can work on that. And my fish, my the it's getting more and more like the I think it's the trees or the bushes, weeds that are weighing my fence down. This chicken coop is gonna need some repairs real soon. The chicken runs gonna need some repairs real soon. And it seems like it's coming at a time that it's fixing to be busy around here with uh, the kids are back in school. And it's, it's hard to get things done when you have a lot of other things on the agenda. You know, during the summer was would have been the time, the ideal time to get some of this stuff done, but it was just too hot. And it's still hot. It's hot today. Yeah, I, I'm honestly, I'm ready for fall. So um, I'm not trying to rush 
you know, thing, but I'm, I'm, I'm really, I'm ready for fall. Now, you know, I, you know, in winter, it's a different story. When it starts getting cold and uh, freeze warnings and stuff like that, then I kind of be backing that train up. But right now, I'm ready for fall. So I am going to uh, let them stay right here and hopefully they'll stay close in this area and I'll be able to come out here and, and get everybody to come back in in a, in a timely manner because we got some other things to do. I, I'm going to bring out my seedlings and I'm going to uh, water my seedlings out here. I'm just going to, the ones that are getting big, it is time to start acclimation, y'all. It's time to start acclimating those seedlings to the outside. Although this heat is not what is going to be ideal for them because I am not planting them out with the temperature uh, constantly like this. Now, sometimes, you know, even in September, if I plant them out, probably, probably going to plant them before the end of August. If I plant them out and then those temperatures start fluctuating, uh, you know, that that would be uh, much different than the temperature every day being in the 80s and 90s because those brassicas are not going to be able to stand that. They will bolt. So I'm not going to put them out side to stay. I'm not going to bring them out and let them stay. I'm going to put them on this little table I got over here next to the house in the shade. I'm going to water uh, them and then some of them are going to get their first feeding because they have their first true leaves. So y'all let's go over here and take care of that. First I want to show you that this watermelon is too big for this bag. I need to take this watermelon out of this bag. before it busts out of the bag. So I will be coming back over here, taking care of that. Okay, I got a melon right here that nothing has messed with so far. Okay, here's another one right here. And there's one. And there's one right there. There's one. There's one right there. I'm gonna get all of my seedlings some water. And I didn't bring the trays to catch the water. I'm gonna let the water just run through and then I'm gonna give them some uh, fish emulsion, but I'm giving them the one that I can take inside the house and it doesn't smell really bad. And then I'm gonna let them sit out here for a moment and then they'll just kind of drain out. And this is the fertilizer that I'm going to be using. It's the organic grow. It's all-purpose plant food. It's a liquid fertilizer. It feeds instantly. You don't have to measure. And it's for indoor and outdoor plants. So this one does not smell really bad. Let me okay, so I'm just adding some to my little watering can. Gave it a stir. And now... Just gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna put some on each one of my seedlings. And I'm noticing that some of my container, the seedling has died. So I got a couple of them that did not just like this one. I can go ahead and take that one out. I'm not going to be wasting up this pot. On this one, I can use this container for another ceiling that needs to be up potted. I see a couple more. So I'm going to take those out and I'm going to clean up my the pots that go underneath them. And we're going to let them sit out here for a little while, not very long, because it is warm out here today and I don't want them to uh, suffer. I just want them to get a feel of what it feels like outside. Okay, so these have been sitting here for a while. I'm going to go ahead and start taking them back inside. And all I did, I've washed up my pots, just kind of rinsed these containers. 
and I'm going to go ahead and, and put them back into the containers and take them back into the house. Okay, these are the last ones I'm going to be bringing out today and letting them acclimate for a, about an hour. These are my leek and celery. I think it has a thousand head kale in here. And these are some flowers on the end. And I'm not exactly sure which ones they are. I think that they are Sweet William. I don't think the hellebore ever germinated. Go ahead and give them some fertilizer. And the leeks and the celery, this will be their first time getting some fertilizer and this Sweet William. This will be the first time for the Sweet William getting fertilized. It is so good to have all of these plants watered and fertilized. are the fall seedlings. And these are the Swiss chard. They have not gotten their first two leaves, so I did not take them out. I just left them inside. And there are also some sweet William right here that do not have their first two leaves. And these are some pansies that do not have their first two leaves. So I just watered them inside. And this is what my lettuce is looking like that's inside the house. And I added some more seeds because it was growing kind of uh, scarce in there. So I added more seeds because I didn't I wanted to fill in those uh, spaces. Now let's see if we can get the chickens back in. And here's the finished granola. Here are the strawberries that I'm going to put into this kombucha. They were just frozen so hard I could not get them apart. So now I think that I'll be able to easily get them apart and just drop a couple in each container. I guess she's trying to hide in here. Cause she know I came out to put her back in. Yep, she definitely trying to hide cause now she went to the other side. She is thinking she gonna hide in here all night. So she is really trying to hide. You are not that type of chicken. You can't stay outside all night. You cannot take care of yourself out here. Emma's over there chasing some in. Sophia's got bread. Okay, you all, everyone is back in the coop safely. I gave them some fresh water. 
It's still bubbling down there. It's so fresh, still foaming up. So everyone is happy in the coop right now. So I hope that y'all have enjoyed this video today and that you'll give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Hit the notification bell to be notified when I upload a new video. And as always, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.